This episode of Super Legit brought to you by Puzzle Club, Magic Eye 3D, and Rise of Triptan Benzoate. Welcome to another episode of the Super Legit Podcast. This is uh, Jet Kaufman. I am the heast with the least. Uh, we got a fantastic collection of players today. There are usual players, but they're always fantastic. Uh, let's get started with uh, Michael Hyman. Michael Hyman, if you could get rid of any state and go back to 49, why would you choose Florida? Um, I can't even answer that because I'm just so happy you picked me first this time. <laughs> it was it was random chance. It doesn't feel random when I'm last every time. Don't let it go to your head. Uh, let's see. We've got Ali Mar. Ali Mar, uh, I'm blue, round, and full of spiders. What am I? Mm, you're blue, you're round, you're full of spiders. I'm a preschool teacher, so like this is a, a real thing for me. Like This sounds <laughs> like someone deflated the like activity mm. pool and we left it out there like all, i knew i asked the right person if fall. anyone could know yeah so like you you sound like a project that i started in august and didn't get to and i haven't cleaned and now you're full of spiders <laughs> <laughs> and then we just decide to like keep you that way like happy halloween kids it's the spider house you know so <laughs> you're my reality you're my, you're yeah, my, that's, my, my like potential future for you. <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's and that's like a big part of the job right is just basically making real useful things out of whatever mayhem happens yeah preschool teachers are just improvisers we only get paid a tiny bit more <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, compared to zero, it's probably a lot more. It's not, though. That's the problem with America. (laughs) Preschool teachers get so much exposure so they can advance to middle and then high school. Honestly, like, I'll take, like, a, you know, like, a Friday closing, you know, because the parents are picking up and, like, I'm just workshopping material at pickup. (laughs) God, it sounds like someone has some first beat issues. Yeah. (laughs) Let's, uh, we heard that voice, so let's jump to Chris Sanders. Chris Sanders, uh, if Sally sells seashells by the seashore for $5 each or two for $8, all at a 10% markup, how does Sally afford a home in Los Angeles County? She doesn't. Bitch needs to franchise. Sorry, I shouldn't have used that word. <laughs> yeah, you set the tone for the show yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I'm the female, yeah. and I'm okay with this. And I think we got our first D. That's, That's great. I don't speak for all females, but... I don't feel good speak, about it. But when I do, bitch. it's on yeah. this. <laughs> We're just going to be fucking speaking our mind this whole fucking show. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Let's just get the F out. I let capitalism get the better of it. <laughs> it happens. Hey, let's not assume, let's not assume anyone's gender either. Right? Yeah. You, I mean, oh, true. Yeah. True. Give him a question. Right? Give him a question. Make him a I should have question. just called Sally an asshole because yeah. that's non gender specific and it's equal Absolutely. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite words. <laughs> uh, okay. Stephen C. James. Hi. Stephen C. James. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, convince me that this isn't the intro to an Italian period piece. Uh, well, first of all, uh, they didn't have uh, pizza pie uh, back in the early days of Italy. Uh, it is a more modern invention, so therefore it's not a period piece. Also, I worked for a terrible Italian restaurant called the Italian Oven when I was in college, <laughs> and that's back. Shout when out I, to the Italian Oven. Yeah, that's back. <laughs> it's when one of the, our sponsors. Uh, <laughs> that's back when the birthday song where you couldn't sing Happy Birthday. So ours was when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. It's your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So why not ruin a song and someone's birthday at the same time? Yeah. Uh. Two birds with one stone. I like it. And Josh Spence. Hey-o. Finally, Josh Spence. Hey. Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I gave I, you the deep thinker. I love this. I think we have turned this enterprise into a franchise where it's just multiple podcasts and networks. And uh, we have set the new Hollywood format of everybody listening to podcasts. And uh, we're rich and famous beyond our wildest dreams. But more importantly, I get to work with my friends and live a live a life being a creative with the dearest of friends. I think that's what really counts in life. <laughs> when are you gonna actually uh, record with your dearest friends? <laughs> uh, in about five to seven weeks, when we have guests. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I'm actually coming into the show uh, with a migraine. 
So that's fine. <laughs> nice, nice. Well done. Yeah. Oh. Anyone else get migraines? I do. I suffer from yeah. really bad migraines. That's why I'm, you can't. Our viewers at home who can't view can't tell I'm wearing <laughs> these big nerdy glasses because I had to get really a stronger prescription and, and blue blockers during COVID because I was spending so much time and I get really bad migraines, especially when I'm exposed to things like your faces on the screen. <laughs> Do you think the blue blockers actually work? It's kind of like that, uh, like pseudoscience, right? You know, I don't know, but even if it is just my mind telling me they work, I'll take it because my headaches got better. So uh, I don't know. I always... Uh, cause I started seeing commercials for blue blockers, like in my teens. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Like nineties. Um, and there were the big the, ones for old people. The huge right, ones. Right, right, right. That's, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. where I was going with it. That yes, I yes. always saw both advertised and when I, when I saw them in their natural environment, they were always on senior citizens. And I started to feel like it, it meant blocking the blues. Oh, <laughs> I can totally see that. What do old folks have? But depression. What do they have left? But uh, depression. Uh, I I want to meet your grandparents. <laughs> I don't really have any. They. Uh, all right. I never. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a good relationship with literally any of the few grandparents I had, and at this point, they're all dead. But one, and he's a con man. Nice. Now I really want to meet your. My granddad grandma. was a con man. <laughs> Really? For real. Oh, wait. I had, okay, talk, talk. Yes, talk now. Please. My, my grandpa, Sheldon Melvin Hyman. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's not a real name. Criminal. That's he not a real name. A white Irish Catholic? Prison. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <you> got it. <laughs> he, uh, he went to a white collar prison for mail fraud. My dad almost went to jail with him because my dad uh, owned a printing press uh, business at the time and printed all of, of grandpa's stuff for him. Uh, he ran a thing called Puzzle Club, where he would, uh, you know, people would subscribe. You'd pay to get in on this puzzle, and then every month you would send the puzzle back, and they would get increasingly harder, and you would have to pay to keep going. And uh, yes. usually people would just do it once or twice, then give up, and they've already paid money. Uh, it wasn't until some people actually got to the winning puzzle, and then they didn't receive the grand prize, <laughs> that uh, he got in trouble for it. I, I remember these. There, there's been a ton of them. I actually, it's funny enough that I somehow my family allowed me to fall for a similar one on like some issues of Game Pro, but I think I did like one and, or or didn't figure out the puzzle. But yeah, Grandpa Shelley uh made a made a living off that for a while. <laughs> Super. Babe. Babe. What the fuck? Waldo isn't even in here. What? What do you mean? He's gotta be- He's not in here. I've gone through every fucking face in this book. Waldo is not in here. Sweetheart. I mean, <laughs> come on. I'm sure you just haven't looked in all the areas. All right? Did you check the corners? He likes to hide in the corners. Holy shit. Are you trying to tell me I'm stupid or something? What no! What birthday present even is this? No, it's it's a Waldo book. I mean, are you sure? Here, let me take a- Okay, First no? First off- I just want to say, I asked Kathy, Waldo is not spelled with two L's. Okay? Oh my god. That's number one. Number two, I searched every single fucking face on this beach scene. He is not here. He looks like he's hiding behind the umbrella, but it's it's not him. It is not him. Oh my god, babe, I'm so sorry. He doesn't have a mustache. Oh my god, hon, I I think I got you a bogus Waldo book. Yeah, I think so too. I am so sorry. I mean, like... It's your birthday, and I feel like I've ruined it. I, listen, the guy told me that it was a perfectly good Waldo book, right? He came by the house, he knocked on the door, and and he said, like, listen, would you like something really special for your special person in your life? And I was like, thank God, it's my girlfriend's birthday. You think I'm special? Of course, babe. Oh my God, I think you're special too. Yeah. I think you're really special. And I, I had already had so much stuff, like, planned for your birthday. It wasn't like, like I had what? forgotten about it. Well, uh, there was, like, a... So this uh, is just the tip of the iceberg? Like No, no, no like, I got, I got the book, and Wear I was like... Wear my heels. I'm going to put my heels on. No, 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 don't, don't, no, no, don't put your heels on. It's just that, like, I, I had all these plans, but I got the book, and I was so excited about the book. 
I canceled the reservation at the restaurant no, and the hot I don't air balloon you. got. You wouldn't do that to me. You just told me I was special. This has got to be some kind of surprise party. Is Kathy in on this? Uh, no, no, I'm. Sweetheart. Oh my God! Babe, babe, this book was babe, a setup, babe, and I'm no, so smart. I figured no, it out. No, babe, babe, no. I'm, I'm sorry, babe. I, I really mean, like, this book. That's it. I, I was like, it'll connect her to like her childhood and like birthdays in the past and like remember how you said when you were 11 your grandma got you a waldo book and like you found waldo and then that was also the same day that you found you know your grandma after the yeah 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 and so like i thought this would be like a way to pull those moments together so i canceled everything else and now this is a bullshit waldo book so you tried to give me my dead grandmother's memories from my birthday yeah, and that's fucking I special, mean, babe. That's I fucking know, special. I know. You're fucking special. You're special. You're really, really gullible, and we're gonna have to work on that because I don't think a traveling Waldo salesman is a thing. But I, if that's I, your biggest flaw, like I knock, knock, live... knock. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Hold, let I think me get the door. Someone just said knock, knock, knock. Yeah. No, no. That's the thing. Like he, our, our door. Like the landlord just put carpet up on the outside of the door, so I put a sign up that says "Say not." That's right. cool. Hold on. All do right. you want to get her or do you want me to get it? Because you I look pretty get comfy. It. Okay, no, I'll go I'm, get it. Yeah, I'm like half okay. naked. <laughs> like, I'm not going to get the door. Where am I door opens. Hey, how are you doing again? Uh, <clears throat> it's hey, me with the Waldo babe, books. Babe, babe, it's the Waldo guy. It's the Waldo guy. Hey, hey, do you have a... Hey, hey, I'm I'm upset with you. Yeah, Right. Him. Yeah, I'm upset with you. And I'm, I'm, sorry I have to, I'm sorry I have to yell, babe. I'm sorry Don't I have to yell. Sorry. I like it when you yell. All right. I'm... I'm damn upset with you. Yeah. And you got me a book that is like there's no Waldo. There is no in Waldo this beat scene. in here. There were a hundred Oh no, yeah. There's no Waldo in the book. The Waldo is somewhere on me. Uh, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this because I yeah. spent six hours trying to find Waldo, so I am invested in finding this man. However um, if you're ready, I'll turn on the stereo, I'll do some dancing for you. You for your got birthday? me a birthday present? I got I, you a Waldo Waldo. I got you a Waldo stripper. You did give me a surprise. I knew it. Now I'm the gullible one. Uh, happy birthday, babe. I love you so uh, much. What is love? Yeah. Baby, don't hurt me. Legit. <laughs> Little did they know the real Waldo was friendship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I did have all of those books. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've... I'm, you know the things like from the same time where you kind of blur your eyes and the you, the three D image eye. comes. I've never been able to see one of those. It might just be because I've got like a terrible astigmatism and poor vision. Are you colorblind? Uh, <laughs> it might be. Is that yeah. one of those things where you find out you're color? Like everyone's like, I see a sailboat, and you're like, fuck. I, no, I'm it's colorblind. It's not you. You just have to. Uh, it's silly. It's almost like it's forcing in kind of like metaphor or, or getting all like uh, kind of spacey with it. You're supposed to look through the image, not yeah. at it. Oh yeah, yeah I can't do either. You're supposed to look like <laughs> one inch or deeper than the image and relax your eyes. I've never been able to see one of those. Yeah. I Yeah. Uh, like when the movie Mallrats came out and there's that whole Ethan Supley oh, bit where yeah. he can't see it. I was just like, mm-hmm. I get it, man. I get it. It's infuriating. Yeah. So that's a great movie too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I trained on those as a kid, and I got really good really fast with them. So even now as an adult, like, it's instant. I don't even have to try. Hey, Jet, put your dick back in your pants. <laughs> or, like, I like Shit. the idea of, like, Sorry. I trained on those as a kid. Like, what kind of fucking nerd Olympics did you go to that you were just training on these puzzles? <laughs> don't judge my childhood. I made, don't, I don't. made the junior team in I Olympics. <laughs> All right, this is... Well, I'm sorry when you have optometrist parents. <laughs> this, is, this is bringing up... I have to step in to defend Jet here. Oh, please, uh, someone did. Thank you. I, I had similar aspirations of ridiculous competition, uh, like competitions that I could be drafted for while doing <laughs> mundane activities as a child. I dreamt... I, I day dreamt while mowing the lawn for my dad that I would be spotted by some by some scout for the for the landscaping Olympics. Topiary, that, 
that would be like, never seen lines like that before. Get in then the you, car, son. Then and you then, just lose to Edward Scissorhands. True. <laughs> I mean, that would be the world's easiest kidnapping. Get in the car, son. Yeah. You're doing such a great job of mowing that lawn. Well, but I dreamt I dreamt of being really good at stuff like that because I had and still have next to none, no athletic prowess. I'm very Which bad. Which is funny because you are sort of built like someone who should, you know? Yeah. I, I No, I know, but I wasn't then. And even though I uh, look like I'm yeah. built kind of that way now, I still can't. I have a, I have a, I have a titanium you. knee. Yeah. Like I have, I had my knee replaced uh, um, a year and a half ago. Whoa. Like I can't do things like run. Um, for the listener, by the way, Chris is what is known as conventionally attractive, which yeah. means that two delegates from every state went to a convention <laughs> and decided, holy crap, Chris Sanders is hot. So you should know no, But that. it's kind of weighted because Wyoming thinks I'm really hot, but California <laughs> thinks I'm just kind of hot, yeah, and yeah. their vote is weight the same. So And D.C. didn't even get a voice in the whole process. Zig. <laughs> Super. All right, folks, we are here back with the Landscaping Olympics. As always, my partner's here. Uh, Snip Diddler. That's me, Snip Diddler. Uh, what, have you, uh, what do you like that you've seen so far, Snip? You know what? I really like Tom Thumb out there. He's a five-tool player. He's got the wedge. He's got the weed whacker. He's got the lawnmower. He's got the shovel and the hoe. He is amazing. Yeah, you have, I, I tell you, I don't know. Get over here, lady. Dig up that dirt. I, I can't tell you if I've ever seen anyone work a hoe the way I've seen that guy go at it today. Uh, what do you like coming up from our next competitor? That's uh, Tom Hoberstreck. Uh, he is a world-class lawnmower. He was actually doing... Uh, 30 degree angles on the lawn. He actually turned down uh, a, a yard ship with the Los Angeles Dodgers to go to college. Zap, 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 right, zap. Going at it with those very sharp, specific directions. We had an opportunity to speak to Hope Driver before we started the competition where he told us a little bit about his growing up in Wyoming and what inspired him to get into landscaping. Let's uh, take a listen to that. Well, it was just all the uh, yard work. Just yard work and yard work and yard work every day. Yard work. Wake up in the morning, 6 a.m., yard work. Go to bed at night, 6 p.m., yard work. Everything in between, yard work. I used to eat the clippings. That's how I got so good at it, because I had to get the best clippings. So I knew how to find all the best spots. Sometimes sometimes I'd find some, some mushrooms in there. Get some I, I tell you, Snip, he went on for a long time about eating the clippings. <laughs> uh Almost borderline graphic, I'll say. The poop was, uh, it was I really screen. figured we would stop yeah, playing same. that uh, graphic, uh, de- descriptions of eating clippings. But here we are. Uh, can we uh, cut that off, please, broadcast? <laughs> Thank you. Frequently constipated. We're still going? I know he said something Sorry, really I'm having horrific. trouble finding the, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the button to, to stop it. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just keep hitting, there's a louder yeah, button. like, uh. Like one of those, uh, one of those uh, uh, compost machines just shooting right out of there, high speed. God, Snip, please day. say something that's going to distract us from this horrific <laughs> image. Uh, you know, I know I'm just the color commentator, color commentator here, but you know what? This is the Gardening Olympics. We really don't talk about this that often. This is the time where we should actually get into the psyche of green thumbery. This is Snip. This is what this is Snip about. I said he was from Wyoming. What else do you need to know about his psyche? See, that's not too cold to your tracks. No more color commentary there, huh? <laughs> I hate you. All right. Well, we'll swing it on to a commercial. When we get back, we'll be uh, in the doubles portion of our landscaping rounds uh, dealing with clippings. Oh, God, not more clippings. Actually, it's uh, four hours of manure talk. I can't believe we uh, get to examine Coming back all the different layers of manure. Sports. Legit. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that... Sports came back. It's weird. It's weird to watch. But I'm glad that NBA basketball is back because I was pretty sure we were going to get to the point where it was just like, you know, coming up, uh, college walking, (laughs) you know, where it's like the most athletic activity or the whatever they put on television uh, was just going to be the most mundane activities, but hyped up with the enthusiasm of sports. Because already it's like, what new TV is there going to be? Like, what are we going to do? When they run out of television. Well, they're not going to. They're, I mean, things are starting to go back into production. They're just kind of operating with 
uh, kind of skeleton crews all the way around, both behind the camera and in front of the camera. Uh, the first television series that went back into production during the pandemic was the Australian uh, long-running primetime soap opera Neighbors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Neighbors. And they, they wrote it in where they eliminated everyone in the cast except for the series regulars. The series regulars could not in any scene inter- like touch each other. <laughs> Every single scene had to be at a distance. Isn't that like a sexy oh. soap? Well, is, wasn't this the one where like they would <laughs> cut in? Uh, there was one of those soap operas. Maybe it was even the United States soap operas where they had the people's actual spouses come to yes. set. And whenever they had to kiss somebody, they cut in like their spouse. And it was actually them kissing like whoever they were in a relationship with. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that could be an American soap because that was the next thing to come back here one of the first things to come back here are the soaps because they've been running like they're already well super well oiled machines that operate like there's not even craft services on a regular soap set you are you are if you book a job even as just a day player on a soap set you are basically told like bring your own lunch (laughs) asshole (laughs) we move quick it's such a crazy tight ship. I did one as a kid. I think it was General Hospital. Uh, it's been so long, I barely remember. And yeah, it was crazy to watch that, like the conveyor belt process of how they they do that show. The script in the morning, nobody has it earlier than that. It's why they have the teleprompters so much because they don't have the script any sooner than that. There's no time to get the shot perfect. It's a case of we do it once, maybe twice, <laughs> and we move on. I did um. I did it under five a few times on all my children. And as a kid, I got to do The Guiding Light a couple times. And Oh, wow. Uh, as a, well, my, The Guiding Light was because my aunt was, was an EP on it. And so like, they'd have like, a Christmas special, and they'd need a bunch of kids, and they'd bring me in. And that's when I really got the acting bug. In fact, one of the episodes, it was like, okay, you're all sitting around a Christmas tree. And uh, the, director, the director's trying to give us backstory. We're like eight. But I was... <laughs> I was like born an actor, so I was like, yes, tell me my backstory, you know? <laughs> and so uh, he's like, you're, you're all orphans. This is an orphanage. So just, you don't have a family, but these nice people are bringing you presents. So you're going to open them and you're going to be very happy and you're going to smile. And then there was a little girl on the set, roughly my age, who had been chosen to be like uh, a, a, a larger part. Like she's going to open and the, her present and it's this doll and... The doll is a is like one of the main actresses has given her this doll that meant something to her. But she sees the look on this little girl's face and she's done something. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole episode. I was eight. But the point was this one little girl was chosen and I wasn't. And I was like seven or eight and I raised my hand. And in front of the whole cast and crew, I was like, I want to play her role. <laughs> 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 and, then, and everyone, including the little girl, just looked at me like that's not something that you say to people. That's awesome. I just kept doing it. Like, like they, I understood <laughs> I wasn't going to play her role, but then they handed out like presents and we were supposed to unwrap our present. And like in the middle of a take, I was like, this is a fire truck. I'm a girl. I want a girl toy. And they were like, cut. <laughs> 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 I was like the biggest seven year old diva extra. <laughs> Super. Coming this fall from the people that brought you big brother comes Real Life Neighbors. Hey, Jim. How's it going? What's up, Lawrence? How you doing? Doing good. Just uh, waiting for uh, the wife to pull the car around. Just uh, just waiting here. It's a nice car you got there, Alexis. Uh, yeah, Alexis uh, TL2000. Uh, got it on a lease, yep. I should have one of those. Yeah, yeah, I think you should. Uh, it... Get, gets great mileage. Uh, God, Holly. You wanna, sh- you wanna drop it off here? Give me the keys. Uh, no, no, that's that's wonderful of you to ask. But um, Holly, Holly should be should be bringing it around the corner any minute. We're actually uh, we're going out tonight. So. Hey, Carl. Hey, Carl. Th- is that you? Hey, hey. Did did I see you dropping your your doggy bag, your doggy do bag, in my trash yesterday? Uh yeah yeah that was uh that 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 was me yeah uh, it was just you know it was the closest trash can there and uh, I just 
Um, I just thought it better to drop it off than to hang on to it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Is oh, that a problem? okay. No, no worries. I just wanted to make sure. I thought there was someone in our neighborhood in our little cul-de-sac that uh, didn't belong here. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you uh, need to use my trash receptacle, uh, just please feel free anytime. You know, just as long as you. Know, a, yeah. No. A that's nice dog you got there, by the way. What kind of dog is that? Oh, Labradoodle. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, feel like fine, I should though. have a Labradoodle. It you seems could like have the kind a of dog I should have. You could have one. Just saying, though, like, I'll, I'll make sure and I'll ask permission to use your trash, but don't don't worry about it. You don't need to say anything if you're going to use mine again. It's fine. Oh, uh, hey, Carl. How's it going, Carl? Carl. Hey, Carl. Hey. Hey. Uh, Carl, just, just wanted to just give you a heads up. You know, they're not ticketing for street cleaning anymore. So you can go ahead and leave your car parked on the curb, but it does mean that parts of our street don't get clean. So, we don't want to have a dirty street, ipso facto, uh -huh. if you want to move your car on Tuesday night, that way Wednesday it gets clean. I, I know this is the third time you brought it up, uh, this is why we started parking in the back. Uh, Holly should be here with the car any minute, I feel like I'm just waiting out here on the... No, it's okay, Carl, park where you want and throw your poopy dog bags in anybody's trash. Look, it's okay. I, I'm, look, I'm sorry. Hey, Carl, Carl, um... Sorry, I only have a minute. The kids just went down. Uh, you know, Becky likes to play hopscotch, and sure, yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't see it with my own eyes, but everyone knows you chew spearmint gum. And you know, when she was playing hopscotch, she was trying to draw the number four, and there was a piece of spearmint gum wrapper. And you know, it's like it's not a big deal. Uh -huh. You know, we are a community, and we take care of each other, and sure. things happen. We know that, but also. Uh -huh. Maybe you could not litter around oh. here because it just litter is like, a hard word. Okay, and I don't know. Maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was someone who doesn't belong here. But maybe uh... I just I just would like to know that you're here to take care of the community. Look, I'm just yeah. gonna call. I mean, there's trash cans everywhere. It's where you put your doggy poop bags. Mm -hmm. Look, a lot of this just sounds. You yeah, and everyone's really you always sharing do. around here. You know, Megan. By the way, you have any uh, any of that chalk left over? Oh, of course. It's always there for you. Just come around back. Can I, can I have oh. some of that chalk? I feel like I should have chalk. Sure. Oh, okay. hey, everybody. You're all out waiting for the mailman to come and deliver the mail right here at 530 in the afternoon. What what crazy time. You're Actually, all I'm just waiting for right my wife. Here. She's supposed to pull um, the car around. I can't say that I've got anything interesting today. Just some, you know, mailers for everyone. Although, Carl, I've got this box that, you know, it started vibrating prematurely. I uh, uh, uh -huh. I would wager to guess what was in it. Usually, you know, privacy with the mail and all. Sure, but, uh, we should keep it that way. Here's your vibrator. Uh, oh no, I didn't say it was. A you didn't say it. Vibrator. I don't want to be the bad guy here, but Carl, could you open that up? I just want to confirm the color of your vibrator. I'd like to know the size, specifically the girth. I mean, it's Guys, not something like we got to worry about. Box Megan's kids are already in bed. Does they it have batteries in it already? Because I've been really low on batteries, and I, I feel like I need some batteries. Oh, my God. Where is Holly? <laughs> is this an HOA meeting? Is this what we're doing right now? At, well, yes. I, I mean, we've got to confirm quorum. it that the dildo meets the Homeowners Association okay. specifications for dildos. Okay. Yes, it's... It is what you think it is. Congratulations. Yes. You're going to have to be more specific than that. That's it's, <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to tell all the guys at the office I had that would write. Don't you tell them it's... Wood. No, look, if I buy a dildo, that's me buying it, okay? You don't need to tell anybody anything. Okay, Carl. Sure, Carl. Sure. Uh-huh. The color? Yeah, if I got the color right, I get 200 bucks. Pink... Legit. <laughs> Good times, guys. <laughs> uh, anyone, uh, anyone ever actually live in an HOA? No. No, I heard. Uh, murder. When I when I owned my condo in Chicago, uh, I was I was uh, in a like condo board. So yeah, it was a homeowners <laughs> association. Boy, uh, yeah. I I owned for. Four and a half years right before I moved here. And for a little bit of that, I was on the board reluctantly. Uh, <laughs> they tried to make me president, and I did. I because said no. And then they tried to make me vice president, and I said, 
<laughs> How about Treasurer? <laughs> and I just took that. It's just, it's fucking absurd. Like, they don't do anything. They oh, it's spend awful. Spend meetings, just all they do is complain about the color of, like, what's the what's our color palette for the entire building? Yeah, what's and the if, stucco requirements? Uh, what's the elastomeric uh, quality that we want to install? And who uh, who drilled into their homes? I was I was also on the board of directors of my HOA. Um, a, true story. I was elected to the board of directors of my homeowners association at the age of fifteen. <laughs> it was uh, it was one of those the air boy bikes. king. Yeah. I stabbed. <laughs> yeah. No, of all the very much Jet Kaufman things I've ever heard in my life, that is the Jet Kaufmaniest. So on brand. <laughs> so on brand. Yep. yep. It was like one of those Airbud situations where where I ran. Was there also Wait, a dog? I don't, oh I don't think this is at all related to Airbud. Well, there's nothing the law that says a child <laughs> can't that be exact, on the board. That was the, Wait that for was the exactly end of the story. It. They had to check the bylaws and they found out that yeah like there was nothing but in there so many other stories it. that's not just Airbud. like you could have well, feel like that's a whole genre yeah ali is so right <laughs> yeah because um, this if you're saying it's an Airbud situation this also suggests that there are so, there are endless sequels to this situation <laughs> involving child jet on homeowners yeah. association Does boards jet, jet do you or think that boards. the primary plot point of Airbud was the rule book <laughs> I mean that was the most interesting part that to was me. Your I, of course, I, well, I'm the guy who rewrote the uh, rules and regulations for the entire HOA, so clearly that was where my priorities were. At 15? Were. Yeah. This Did is why write... he didn't learn how to drive until he was 17, and he was too busy rewriting the HOA <laughs> rules. Did you write yourself <laughs> off of the board of directors when you wrote those new laws? I I served two terms and I left uh yeah, I actually got reelected to the board of directors. <laughs> So, and because he implemented like mandatory HJs before each meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I got my first one. <laughs> I love the idea of you throwing like a, your school dance, like at your your wreck in your your building. You know? Well, I was homeschooled, so that's kind of how that had happened. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! The, yeah, the HOA was went... also your student council. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that kind of maps, you know, like I ran for, you know, president of my student council. If I, if I w didn't leave my apartment building, I guess I'd be on the board of something, you know, like <laughs> it's just trying to have a normal childhood. Oh my God. Was the swim team, the like, community pool? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Carefully regulated too. Was your fish take the agriculture club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you run for prom? Uh, I just did laps around the property realistically. <laughs> Oh, you, you took it literally. Yeah. <laughs> all I had, because I had no other perspective on running for prom. It was really confusing for me. Is... She's all that hadn't come out yet at that point. Oh so I really God. had no prom experience. But Pretty in Pink was out there. But when did you lose your virginity? Uh... Not yet. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, stop, stop, stop before you say it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like we have to make a game of this. Okay. All with right. that, you just answering. But before we get to that game, ladies and gentlemen, Super Legit is brought to you by a wonderful array of sponsors. Today, uh, Michael Hyman has our latest sponsor, Michael Hyman. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, here, let, let me pop that tape in for you. <laughs> Picture this. Your mother has just died. You and your <laughs> spouse are showing up for the funeral. It's a beautiful day nearing sunset. You walk up the hill to the gravesite. All your friends and family are there. You show up, your mother's corpse is just out in the open. You forgot to buy a coffin. Well, don't be shy. Call up Franklin's Recycled Coffins. We're open 24 hours a day and we deliver directly to Graveside on a moment's notice. You don't want to have that old-timey charm of letting your grandmother, mother, or a uh, distant cousin rot out in the sun like a, like a western hobo. No. You want to get that nice wonderful recycled coffin we also add smells for you to liven up the occasion mint and vanilla don't show up to your grave or your funeral saying whoops i forgot a coffin call franklin's recycled co coffins it's corpserific uh thank you mike so uh what's this how's how do you want to play this game regarding uh jet's virginity um <laughs> I, th I think we could do a simple, like, we'll each uh, pick an age, I guess. I think or we each um, ask one question, and then we all go, go around again and pick an age. Because I feel like... I, 
I also feel like that's what whoever took his virginity said before they took it. So how do you want to play this game concerning your virginity? I don't picture it being taken. I picture it being thrust upon someone like, please take my virginity. Oh, shit. Um, oh, are we socked? That's oh, mean. No, I know what, what that's really I mean. Uh, me. I'm sorry. Are, are, are we doing Price is Right rules where it's like the closest without going over? Yeah. A dollar. One dollar. I think it's real easy to go over in this kind of guessing. So maybe just closest. Well, I have... I have questions though, because you did do cool things when you were a kid, right? Like, I mean, you were homeschooled, but you also like did movie, TV stuff. It was so, a like, professional yeah. actor. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. thing. So, like, but also, his mother was there all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's that's also very, very <laughs> accurate. That makes no difference. My God, did tough. you lose your virginity to Kirstie Alley? <laughs> I just want to do a quick check-in. I just want to make sure that the number's not going to be, like, child actor low, where we all feel real bummed out. Oh, I want that to happen. Oh. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I feel like at this point I shouldn't clarify, uh, I shouldn't put any uh, upper or lower limit on it, because that just makes it all the more entertaining. See, Is it cheating if I pull a... up his IMDb yeah. page? Yeah, I don't no think cheating, so, no. no cheating, okay. no cheating, no cheating. What, is that, Honestly, so that is cheating. What would bum, That's cheating. What would bum me out is if it were actually... He were older than I was when I lost mine, and already that bumps me. Okay, so okay. let's do this. Everybody gets to ask one question, yeah, and then everyone guesses their age after everyone asks the question, and then Jet will let us know. Deal? Yes. All right. Uh, my first question, Jet, were you wearing polo shirts by then? <laughs> uh, no, polo shirts were not a part of my wardrobe. Okay, thank you. Did it, wait, did this have to be yes or no? Or can we get a specific? Well, I guess the, the standard's been set now that I gave more Fair. than just that. Fair. Yeah. Mike, you're up. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let, let someone else go if you've got a question. Steven, me. you're up. Uh, I was thinking something else. Was the person you lost <laughs> your virginity to uh, a... A hookup slash one-time thing, or was this a relationship, an established relationship? Hmm. Uh, I'm actually going to have to say that's ambiguous. <laughs> Out of boy. Okay. Um, who should go next, Allie? Uh, uh, you. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> um, now we've already established that using your IMDb IMDb page could be cheating. So yes. I'm just doing this uh, from memory. Was it when you played Brandon Tartikoff in an episode of Doogie Howser, MD? <laughs> yeah, just straight, straight out of your memory, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was I was definitely older than that because that would be incredibly creepy. Okay. Chris Sanders or Michael Hyman? By the way, at the time, uh, I was cast as Brandon Tartikoff, uh, partially as a joke, uh, although they, they didn't re quite realize at the time. I actually, at that time, was friends with Brandon Tartikoff. And they asked him to watch the episode as a they, they They just wanted the joke on his name. They didn't realize that I was actually somebody who knew him personally. So it was a double joke. Follow up question. Was he on the condo board with you? <laughs> <laughs> no. OK, uh, Chris, uh, you're up next. Yeah. Uh, so at the age at which you lost said virginity, uh, whenever you would come, was it a was it a surprise still? <laughs> Uh, no, definitely not. Okay. How is that, that question that, both that crosses, and creepy at the same time? I also would like to say... As that crosses woman, out a lot of ages. It does. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I was going to let you know as a woman that that, doesn't, that is not age-specific at all. <laughs> but that for is, women. That did, no, no, for my experience with men. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm just having the picture of like a 35-year-old dude. Surprise. Like, what? Oh. What just what? happened? What, what the what fuck was that? that? Surprise. Yeah, no one is, said that was not gonna happen. Specific. It's my question, and before I ask the real question, <laughs> I have an unrelated question because I wanted to understand the spread and Tartikoff thing with Doogie Howser. I... <laughs> <laughs> Who was Brandon so Tartikoff? Have... Was that a character of Doogie Howser that I'm forgetting, or president of NBC? Or... Yeah, he was oh, the president okay. of NBC at the time. Gotcha. Uh, and, and, and Doogie Howser was not on NBC. It was on either CBS or ABC, ABC, guys, CBC. ABC. I wasn't allowed to watch, like, television as a child, so, like, all just of your on it. sound amazing, but I really don't know what you're talking about. You were just allowed to be on television, <laughs> not watch it. If you weren't in Cats at the Winter Garden Theater, I didn't know you. <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Mike, what's your question? Um... 
that actually answer that question really informs my real question. Awesome. Um, it doesn't actually, but uh, <laughs> how would you the with the person with whom you lost your virginity? We've already established that it's ambiguous whether or not it was a relationship or not. But would you have considered this person a a close friend? Mm. I'm gonna lean slightly on no. All right, now time for the age. Uh, Jet, how old are you now? I am 38 now. And we have est- we have established that you have had intercourse since the first time. Right? <laughs> Sorry, for for casting purposes, I should say I am over 18. <laughs> uh, I I am gonna say, but can uh, play 17. Yeah. But- <laughs> and, um- and don't uh, say, I don't think he should say yes or no. I think we should just all give an age. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Tell us. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. I'm gonna say one dollar, Bob. Uh, I think fourteen. Fourteen. Wow. Fourteen. Yeah. I was gonna say sixteen. Ooh, sweet. I'm gonna say twenty. Yeah, I'm going on the higher end here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go twenty-one. Uh, I'm gonna actually say uh, like eight, eighteen and a half. You're going with the half? <laughs> really going super specific there. Yeah, it was I, the month of yeah, August. Yep. But what month, Hyman? What month? <laughs> I'm going to put it like like on your half birthday. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should have asked, was it a celebration? <laughs> oh, that would have been such, uh, a good, been such a good question that we don't I get the answer to. I did question. because, you know, knowing he was homeschooled. It would have been a good one to know if it was a celebration because prom is a big thing, and that would have yeah. given us a specific age range. But then he said, it, you know, he was too busy on the board of his HOA. So, uh, by the way, if you're a young person and you're listening to this, or an older person listening to this, we are not stigmatizing virgins. Uh, whether you are a virgin or not a virgin, you're still a fine human being. We love you. Yeah. We're just fucking with Jet. Yeah, so, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Agreed. the voted upon uh, conventionally attractive guy. Uh, I, I didn't lose my virginity until I was nearly 21. So, there. Uh, maybe that's how yeah. you got attractive. Like, maybe people keep... I was super keep, ugly, keep and then I fucked, and, sex, and it stop. was like the ugliness melted away. Damn it, Chris. Now we don't have a segment for another episode. Yeah. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. We can ask other questions, like where it happened. Mm-hmm. Let's get the, the ages one more time for our listeners, and then let's get the answer. Josh says 14. Allie? I said 16. Sanders? 21. Hyman? I say 18 and six months on the dot. On the nose. <laughs> Stephen C. James, what was your answer? And I said 20. Jarrett Kaufman, what is the actual answer? <clears throat> so the actual answer, uh, boy, Hyman, had you not been so specific, uh, <laughs> you would have... <laughs> Tied with Allie because I was 17. Ah. So it's that extra half that just screwed oh, you. Oh, I should have just said 18. You know what, actually? Yeah. Oh, I win. You know what? I actually was going to say 17 before I decided, no, probably a little older. So damn. Uh, yeah, coulda, woulda, shoulda does not count. No, it does not. <laughs> Do I win something? Do you? Get, oh, you know what? I know what I want. Text me later and give me her name so I can Facebook stalk her. <laughs> <laughs> or better, that is or awesome even better, look at her IMDB. Yeah. <laughs> See what episode it was? <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, strangely enough, not anyone in the entertainment industry. Uh, so you're all it assuming it was a lady. Yeah, yeah I almost said I didn't. him, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, you've, you've heard ha- about my, my wife, my yeah, ex-wife, yeah. Uh, girlfriends. So I, I happen to be uh, straight, and people are aware of that fact. So I, I think it was a safe guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, 17. Very very boring, uh, very boring answer. By the way, honestly, I really the, uh, appreciate you. It was journey you. that mattered protecting Shelly Long's privacy by saying it wasn't <laughs> someone in the industry. That's classic. Oh my God, I'd be so uh, thrilled. I love Shelly Long. She's the best. She was a gentle lover. Yeah, she's the yeah, best. And she, was, and she was off the show by that time, too. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a, a, a it, total It was a personal Just connection. Friendship. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, right. also, I also got to say that I feel like that game was so much more fun in the middle of it, and I could have done without the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the journey. Yeah. Yeah. As Jet just said. Uh, Jet, I have a follow-up question then. Uh-huh. Uh, obviously not concerning the first time, but do you share an IMDb credit with anyone with whom you've had intercourse? Oh, that's an interesting question. I, uh, I took off my IMDb. No, so. it's all been normies that I can recall. <laughs> normies. <laughs> Is is that what you call them in the field, normies? Civilians. 
Yes. Is that how you talk about your conquest with your IMDb credit friends about all the normies you've hooked up with? (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it really is. It's one of those, uh, one of those things that you brag about within the industry. It's like, cause everyone's hooking up with other actors. I was like, no, I got some normal. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, my girl, my girl's a hairstylist. Suck it. (laughs) Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we've had some wonderful sponsors during our time for the Super Legit recording. Uh, Such luminary brands as uh, Pod Chicken, uh, Monster Cum Energy Drink, Franklin's uh, Recycled Coffins, Store Brand Ice Cream. Uh, We actually have a really special one to you today by Stephen St. James, uh, the Italian Oven. Uh, Stephen, if you have a minute, you'd like to share some thoughts on that for our our sponsor today? Oh, yeah. Let me press uh, play on the tape that I've got here. Um, Great. Hey. Welcome to the Italian Oven. Is your family too good for Pizza Hut? Come to the Italian Oven. Are you not good enough for the Olive Garden? Come to the Italian Oven. When you need a mid-price chain with low-quality food, come to the Italian Oven. Here, we treat you like family that doesn't like you very much, but let your kids run around and not really care about what they get into. Every meal we serve comes with that Italian classic, fried rotini deep fried pasta no italians ever eaten it no italian ever would eat it but it's cheap and we dole it out for free like chips and salsa italian style let your kids run around the restaurant and order pizza even though it's way more expensive than in any place else here at the italian oven we treat you like family distant family distant family that gets served their food by an alcoholic waiter remember here at the italian oven we're family that just doesn't like you very much. Keep your distance. Super. Hey, Jenny, where you want to go for your birthday dinner? Oh, babe, 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 babe. I heard yeah, about Jenny? this new place. Tell I me about, about it, Jenny. This. Tell me all about it. I want to make you happy for your birthday. I love it when you call me Jenny. I want to go to the Italian oven. The Italian oven? It yeah. sounds fantastic. They deep fry this pasta. Nobody's eaten it before, but Is I'm Is it rotini? It. Tell me it's rotini, the most deep fryable pasta. <laughs> That's why I loved you so much, baby. You call me lady names, <laughs> and you know random obscure pastas that I've never eaten before, but you have. I oh, read about it on banger. the internet. That sounds like a joke about my cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love your cock. I know you do. I love it when you call me Jenny. And I love it when you say how much you love my dick. Yeah, but usually I call it your clit to go with the whole theme of calling you a girl. That's right. Again, I'm a lady. I totally love to help you out you. by wearing women's clothes. What do you think of this number? That is a fantastic bustier. You should wear that to the Italian oven. Babe. 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 Yeah, Jenny. Why do you, why do you think I have it on? To wear to the Italian oven? Tell me it's, that's the answer. Yeah, I exactly. I don't want to have to think about it very carefully. I know you don't. I One of the things I don't like about you is how fucking stupid you are. But, <laughs> but, but, babe, babe, yep. I love yeah, you. Yeah, Jenny. I love you. I love you, too. Can we get in the car? I, ah, shit. You know what? I just realized I left the car parked out front. We're going to have to try to sneak to the car so the goddamn homeowners association doesn't come out and try to stop us about throwing our garbage in that garbage. You shouldn't have become the president of the HOA. I didn't mean to. I told you, don't run for the HOA. You're going to get elected. They're going to beg you to be the president. I didn't mean, I didn't try to run for it. I'm gregarious. You always tell me how gregarious, people like me. Okay, babe, people that like me. That was me accidentally calling you Gregory. I know, I, I know. I don't even know what this word is that you mean, you're saying. No, gregarious. Like, people enjoy, I'm, I'm outgoing and fun. You know, people enjoy my, let's just walk out the front door and try to get to the car, okay? <sighs> All right, we'll go to the Italian oven again because it's the best place in town, I assume, because you're picking it for your birthday and you've got the best ch- taste in food. I do. Uh, I'll just hit the unlock on the old fob here and... Beep, beep. Oh, right. sh- shit. 
Cut to outside. <laughs> hey, you think Jenny and Babe are still arguing? They argue a lot, right, neighbor? Yeah, yeah, those two. I mean, it's the passion, you know? It's, uh, you can't hide passion like that. The way they're always dressing up and saying filthy, filthy things to each other. Just right in front of their open windows where everybody standing outside can hear. You know, I wish I had a wife who was so angry at me who would call me girl names and reference my penis as a clit all the time. Do you? Just a personal. Do you? Do you? It's just, no, it's just, it's passion. You know, it's, 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 look, you're my you know, neighbor, but I shouldn't. There's a lot of forms of passion. You're, you're saying I'm, I'm taking a little over the edge? Yeah, I mean, just because, like, think about it like anchovy. Those two anchovies. people like anchovies. It's a very specific taste. You don't mm. have to get anchovies on your pizza. You can still enjoy your pizza without having to deal with their anchovies. You know, it's fine to have somebody who's like uh, a Hawaiian pizza or even less exotic like pepperoni. It's still passion. You know, it's still love. It doesn't have to be Jenny and Babe. I mean, I respect it. I don't like it. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you don't like sardines on a pizza? No, no, I, I, it's not for me. I don't judge other people, oh, just man. not for me. I'm not going to order it. Babe, babe, just get in the car. They're going to see us. Just get in the car. Shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, but they're talking again. I hear them talking. And I, they're they're, saying they're gonna hear you. Too. They're gonna hear you shut your mouth. Who doesn't like sardines or anchovies on their pizza? Oh, I can't see you right. Who doesn't like sardines on their pizza? That's right. It, 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 it's salty little fish. I like the, the, the epitome. There's a word I know. There's no. a word I know. Hey, where the, the fuck are you going? Pizza. We're talking about you. Why don't you like sardines on your pizza? Sorry, I thought you guys wanted some private. I don't like sardines no, no, on my no. pizza. No, 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 we did. We did want some privacy. We were trying to sneak the car so we didn't have to deal with you fuck faces. But you just had to be sitting here talking about how much you hate sardines on a pizza. Do you know where we're headed? Yeah. The, you know the where Italian, we're headed? Italian, Italian oven. Exactly. I'm sorry. Did I jump the gun and say that too soon? I'm not no, you a said it. Game? You said did it you exactly. you a guessing game? No, you said exactly when I wanted you to say it. I motioned for you to say it. Okay, I want to make sure because sometimes you like to do the guessing games and like oh, the I fun. Do. Yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, the fun Absolutely. comes in the guessing. You're so right. That's right. You're so right. Yeah. That's, that's why, why this say, is. Guess what? You know? Yeah, oh, that's true. Hey, hey, guess what? What? It's not his turn to talk. It's mine. So, we're going to the Italian oven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess. They put sardines on pizzas. You know what else they put on pizzas? Uh, barbecue chicken pizzas. Yup. I was gonna say anything you want. Guess what? What is that? They is that also for me deep or for... fry pasta. They deep fry roti. It was for anybody. Anytime someone says, "Guess what?" What? It's for anybody in the immediate area. Right. Have you never played? We're looking at Bay. We're looking at Bay. The answer was gonna be deep fry roti. God, I, I thought you were doing that for them. You know, this is why I don't like this homeowners association. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to trivia night at the Italian oven. Guess what? Uh, what? Four! Uh, Harry Potter! Uh, Star yes. Trek! Yeah, a little louder, a little uh, louder! Uh, 17! Uh, Rotini! Alex 14. Trebek no, in 1982! You with the anchovies! You win free breadsticks! Yeah. Alright! Yeah! Question number two! You guys share those with me! Guess who? Uh, Tony Collette! It's Tony Collette! Mark James oh, Gandolfini! He got it! He got it! He got it off the top! It's Tony the Collette! Hates the an- yeah, yeah! The one who hates the anchovies! Nice! Got it. Always go with Muriel's wedding, everybody! High five! I have High a five. question, trivia host. That's not usually how this works, but go ahead. Are you going to ask a question that requires a more specific answer other than guess who or what? Get because the I've... fuck out of here. Hey, yeah, don't get ruin the fuck this, out of here. Come on. The Italian of it. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, We bro. don't do specific. That's we so... do vague. That's so... We don't want your kind here. Generic That's questions so... to go no, along with the generic with the Italian, Italian food. I don't know what Italian family you come from, but this is exactly what it's like. I'm not Italian. When you're here, you're not family. Legit. Did you get that voice? <laughs> Legit. <laughs> uh, so- sorry. This is this is the magic of doing this over Zoom. Yeah. That there's enough of a delay that 
I'm my video is already on and you've established that my name is Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> That's so well, good. We came in at the same time, but I felt like you, yeah. I, I had already been in a long scene and I, and you hadn't. So you became Jenny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But Hey, whatever, you know, we justified. It can be a nickname too. Like I feel like people have, you know, like my best friend's name is Chris and she's a, g- a girl. Like you just, you, you know, you have nicknames for reasons or it could just be something like, you know, you have silly names. Like he, yeah. Maybe my nickname is, uh, is, is, uh... Jet? How did you get your nickname? Uh, that would be from, uh, actually in the same time period as me losing my virginity, the girl I had a huge crush on. He was known uh, as the Jet. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, she, uh, I had a, I had a friend I had a huge crush on who, uh, uh, called me Jet, and I was like, where did that come from? She said, well, Jed is short for Jared. So Jet should be short for Jarrett. This sounds like a manic pixie girl type <laughs> who's like, I'm just going to give you my own personal name. And then you're like, I'll keep it forever. Was she Zoe like, Deschanel? Was that, your, was that her? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Whoa. That, that sounds like the kind of thing like from anyone else in your life would be like, fuck that, that's dumb. But because of her, you were like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I took on a special, special meaning. You yeah, went out with Scott weird. Pilgrim's Change girlfriend? the course of your life. Ah, and speaking of uh, courses changed for life, uh, clearly this episode has changed a lot of lives. Word. Uh, Word. For the better. It certainly has changed mine after uh, after that horrific uh, voice I did. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> yeah. So Acting. I'd like to uh, thank our audience for joining us again for this episode. And I'd like to thank mm-hmm. each of you individually and personally for joining me for this episode. Mm. That's cute. Uh, I'm not actually going to rename each of you, so it's not that personal. Yeah, that's it's just not, a general it's not thing. individual <laughs> then, is it? No. At all. No, but you get to individually tell us uh, anything that you want people to know about you, where to find you, where not to find you, Ali X. <laughs> uh, but we'll start with you, Ali X. Uh, where can people not find you? I mean, I live in Santa Monica, so if you want to walk around and look for me, I'm about 5'3", and my name is Ali. <laughs> there we go. Just shout Ali. Uh, Michael Hyman, where can people find you or what should they uh, look for on the internet? Uh, uh, I'm Hymenator on, on Twitter and I want everyone to know that I finished Ghost of Tsushima and it's worth a go. Very good. That's what I want people to know. <laughs> I great cannot thing. believe that part a big chunk of this episode is about Jet losing his virginity and Michael's name is Hymenator. <laughs> Life's a herald, guys. Yeah, he took he took the name from everything him. is full circle. Uh, Josh Spence, uh, what should we look out for for you? Hey, oh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, JP underscore Spence. I do uh, film reviews, music reviews, uh, just general pontifications. You can also find me here on the lovely Super Legit podcast with all of these wonderful rock stars. And uh, we're currently working on uh, some fun projects coming up in the future. Keep your eyes peeled to the sky. Oh my god, is it going to be in the sky? What? <laughs> Skynet! We're building it, guys. We're building Skynet. I wish I lost my virginity to a guy named Harold now. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, so. That would have been a first beat, for sure. I know. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. know. We'd have to do the whole fucking thing over. <laughs> Stephen C. James, I know you've always got something cooking. What you got? Uh, well, uh, if you enjoyed listening to this voice on Super Legit... Uh, I also am a part of the podcast team behind In Theaters Never. It's a movie minute podcast. And this season we're breaking down a movie called Broken Comet Justice. Uh, (laughs) And if you've heard of that movie uh, and want to be a part of it, uh, that's amazing because we're making up the movie as we go. Uh, So come check it out. Uh, It's super fun. Uh, Currently sitting at an average of five stars on, uh, on iTunes. So check it out. An average of five. That is impressive. That is, uh, that is, uh, if I, if I did my math correctly, <laughs> that is a perfect score from every single review. Don't ask how many reviews we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you notice All I of did. them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Steven's mom's like, I love it, honey. <laughs> I won't let her review it for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Chris Sanders, what you got? Uh, uh, Twitter, I guess. <laughs> at Chris R. Sanders. I'm, I'm finally breaking quarantine in a sense and shooting a commercial for six days Yay. next week wow for some six fucking day commercial yeah it's non-union 
and it's for a an electrical repair service <laughs> company called Sparky. You ever heard of them? Uh, you do now. Exactly. Will have now. Yeah. Yep. No. So I don't know. Um, it's because they didn't have any of that conventionally attractive magic. <laughs> yeah. Probably gonna get coronavirus for uh, some bullshit. Super legit. Um, buy out. It's great. Yeah, but you'll have a free electrical service for life, right? That's, no, that, that's, that's not, the contract. That's not how they pay. Think oh. of all the exposures you're getting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that so and hard. What a potentially fatal pun. Hymenator. And I am Jared Lennon Kaufman, uh, aka Jet. You can find me at Turbo. The Fool. Jet. <laughs> the Jet. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that name's so generic, I couldn't, uh, any play off of it that I tried, I failed miserably with. So <laughs> I am Turbo Fool. Yes, you heard that correctly. No, I won't explain it. On Power Rangers. Every service you could possibly imagine, except PlayStation. Some jackass stole it on PlayStation Network, <laughs> and so that is why I don't own a PlayStation and never will. Awesome, me. Not bitter. Now I know who Elton John was talking about in his song. <laughs> Turbo Fool? No, the Jets. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Rocket Man. Benny. <laughs> Benny, but did you have a friend named Benny? And then there was a group of other friends you had that were also named Garrett. Yeah, that was that was that was my entourage yeah. uh, in my acting career. Like that was that was everybody. Yeah, like I go around introducing everyone as like, uh, this is this is my friend Jet. This is my other friend Jet. Uh, it was it was a whole uh, New Heart thing that nobody understood because all the kids my age didn't watch New Heart. It was <laughs> awkward. I thought that's and how they, they referred to the whole HOA council. You were the president. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just? I, I, I feel like every episode we should just pick on one person for the <laughs> theme of the episode. And every episode that one person should be Jet. Yeah. Okay. I'm down. I'm really hey, for once. All in favor? Hey Jet, do I start recording now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and a uh, quick shout out to Matt Walker who did uh, the music for our intro and outro. Just always love to plug him. Uh, Remember his website, Josh? Uh, MWWalker.com. There we go. So swing by there for uh, these tracks and a lot more. Talented guy. All right, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on our next episode, or hear you, or you'll hear us again. Logic <laughs> doesn't compute in my brain. Good night. I don't believe anything's on. Oh my time. I kick the door. Just so I can move on Oh, oh, oh. oh. You don't want to have that old-timey charm of letting your grandmother, mother, or uh, distant cousin rot out in the sun like a like a western hobo.